Dragons, Wizards, Witches and Muggles. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. Today I have got quite the haul for you. I went to Edinburgh recently. You may have seen my museum contact shop tour video. If you haven't, go check it out whichever side it is. I think it's this side. Go check that out because I bought so many cool things from there. Now this is mainly a museum context haul but I do have a few little bits and pieces that I thought you might be interested in seeing from my Edinburgh trip from other shops. I'll of course let you know where everything is from and if I remember how much things are as well. So if you want to know what I got like look hang on. Ooh, it's heavy! Oh, it's so heavy! Why is it so heavy? <laughs> Um, I'm gonna be showing you everything in that bag so keep on watching and if you're brand new to this channel hello welcome don't forget you can click the subscribe button if you like to be part of our weird magical online family but let's go cuz I got a spending problem okay then so in no particular order I'm gonna show you all of the bits and bobs that I got from Edinburgh I had a lovely time in Edinburgh actually it's a very beautiful city and I think if you are a fan of Harry Potter it's a must see like you have to go there um, there's so much cool magical stuff that we found and loads of really lovely shops as well and not just magical ones but either way I got this let's start with the bag I got this lovely tote bag from Museum Context on Victoria Street I'm just gonna pick things from it and talk about them. So first things first, I got myself a book. This is from Museum Context. It's a witchcraft book and it says a handbook of magic spells and potions. I'm not sure how much this was. I think it says here it's about 10.99 but either way it's really nice i did i buy it mainly for how um <laughs> how the cover looks yes but i am also interested in the topic of this book as well and it's got lots of spell oh look <laughs> the first page that i opened it to was spells against enemies i mean is there any more like pos positive ones to make a lover come back don't agree with that i think if a lover's gone it's probably for a reason things to open locks i'm very intrigued i'm not gonna lie but yes i did mainly buy it because it was a beautiful book um, but I will definitely have a little read on that so yeah little witchcraft book Whoa, what else did I get now I did pick up you would have heard me talking about these in my museum context shop tour I found a Scots edition of Harry Potter so it <laughs> it is all in Scottish like look at the back I, I it says Harry Potter doesn't he know Ken the first thing about Hogwarts see great Scottish accent you can stop laughing <laughs> <laughs> but yet yeah, the whole book is written like that and it's great it's great so I actually bought my dad one of these as well I thought he would appreciate it you can get these from about 7.99 but what a great memento after visiting Scotland now, the next thing that I got was actually from a shop called, I think it was The Enchanted Galaxy, and they had some of these cards, which are Mina Lima. Now, they have discontinued these. My friend Rodney that joined me on the trip told me about them. We actually bought the last three in the shop because they're so difficult to get hold of. So this is a prop replica, as well as being a greetings card. I bought this for £3.99, but it says, Dear, Dear Harry, thinking sweet thoughts of you. Happy Valentine's Valentine's Day from Romilda. Like what a cute card to send someone on Valentine's Day. Now obviously I'm not going to send this because you can't get them anymore. I definitely bought it because I just wanted it in my collection and it's very nice. Nice and foiled and you guys know I'm a big fan of Mina Lima by now so how could I resist? Now the next thing, back to museum context stuff, I may have treated myself to a quill. I believe this was around £12. It comes in this very lovely faux leather looking box with some foiling on it and it's a feather quill pen with a vin vintage design. <laughs> you didn't see it. I mean you did. Oh look at that. Oh look at that. Now I bought this because now I do have many quills in my collection. I like to be fancy but they're all ink quills. This one I bought because you can see it is a ballpoint pen so it's a biro. I'm gonna put this in my office so every time I'm writing notes I'm gonna be like that's how we write on our fancy parchment but how cute like what a lovely pen I just fell in love with them really nice I love that it came in a little fancy box mine's not staying in the box mine's definitely going to be used but yes that's from the museum context now what was quite nice if you do go there they do do loads of different <laughs> So it's a doo-doo. Loads of different feathers and you can choose from them. I just really liked the look of this one. You know, 
the quill chooses the wizard. I'm joking, I know it's the wand, but this one chose me. So yeah, lovely little quill. <laughs> now, if you do go to Edinburgh, there is a really lovely vintage bookshop called Armchair Books. This was recommended to me by a friend of mine called Will, and obviously I was like, I need to go to that one, because he said it was the best bookstore in, that he'd been to in Edinburgh. I was like, you know what, yeah. At first, it's very beautiful. Like, there's loads of books, like, floor to ceiling. I didn't film in there or anything. I don't think they really like it. There was actually a sign on their door being like, this isn't for content creators. Broke the rules, went in anyway, just without my camera. But yeah, so you go in, and they don't really look vintage when you walk in, and you go around a corner. It's like a little bit of a labyrinth of books. They're very, very pretty. But I looked in there with Rodney for a good hour, I reckon. I came across these books. I don't want to tell you how much I paid for them. <laughs> I will, in a moment. These just spoke to me. This one in particular spoke to me first because look at that spine. Did I buy these for Instagram flat lays and purely because of the aesthetics of vintage and how beautiful they were? Yes, I did. I didn't buy them for the topic. But this spine, I was just like, that is beautiful. And the front, I just, I just fell in love with it. I have no other reason. I know it's not a reason to buy books. You meant to buy books to read, but I didn't, so suck it up. This one was actually quite reasonably priced. This one was £9.75. And I think it's from 1921, though. It does say 1955 there, but... Either way, it says 1921 there, but nice vintage book. And the other one I got, I actually think this was from a religious um, section. I just fell in love with the gold and the gold for, mm, look at those pages, look. Look at that, they look like so shiny. I just bought it because it's pretty. I know, ooh, wow, 1884, I mean, these are vintage and like there's a lot of history to them. This one was 55 pounds, I know. I should be wearing like gloves or something. So yeah, lovely little bookstore. If you get the chance to visit, I do recommend just to browse and peruse the shelves. Okay, next few bits were from a shop that I don't remember the name of. I think it might have been called Eden. It was on, I believe, Cockburn Street. It was one of the first shops that we went into in Edinburgh and I saw this and I was like, yes, that is coming to live with me. This is so nice. It's a cutting, like, um, a proper, proper, when you cut little bits of plants, you can propagate them into growing. I think propagate is the right word. I'ma Google that real quick. Yes, to breed specimens of a plant or animal by natural processes from the parent stock. So yes, if you take a cutting from a plant and you put it in water, a lot of the time they will grow roots and you'll be able to plant them again. This is, you can see that they've got a Chinese money plant in there. I would love a Chinese money plant and then to make babies and then give all of my friends and family like babies babies from my plant. Just like that idea. Either way, I love this. It stands like this and you have your little vase in the middle swinging around. <laughs> it doesn't have to swing, but I just thought it was really pretty and it did kind of look like something you would find in Hogwarts. This cost me £12.50. I fell in love with it. I was like, how beautiful. I've never seen anything like it either. I know that you can buy propagating vase sets and stuff, but I've never seen them and this one, I was like, it needs to be mine. You're coming home with me. <laughs> Oh, okay. What else we got in here? Look into my magical bag of goodies. Next. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, hey, you're not meant to buy more candles. I say this all the time every time I get a new candle, but either way, I bought a new candle. <laughs> I bought this in the same shop as the propagating vase stand. This was £19. Now, I'm not going to lie. I know that that is quite steep for a candle. It's quite expensive, but <laughs> Hear me out. You'd understand if you could smell this. So this is by the Cairn Cable Co. And it's rhubarb and white lilac. And it says it's featuring rose lily lilac on a floral base of violet. It's a sustainably sourced soy wax as well, which is always a plus. Vegan. And it's got 50 hours of burn. So I guess if you take in the, the amount of hours versus the price, it's not too bad. Oh! I didn't know, I didn't see this when I bought it. It says this candle plants a tree. For every candle sold, we plant one tree with trees for the future. Trees are planted across six countries in sub-Saharan Africa to improve the livelihoods of impoverished farmers by revi revitalizing degraded lands. So that's cool, feel even better about buying this candle to be fair. And it does actually say it on the, I just don't read things when I pick stuff up. I literally smelt it in the shop, the tester. 
and I was like, yes, that is what I want my home to smell like. Oh, that's cool. Candle care inside the lid, and it's quite detailed. What else did I buy? This has been in this bag, by the way, for about two weeks, so I forgot what I bought. Let's get... <laughs> Okay, I forgot that I bought some of these. Um, I got these from various places. Let's talk about <laughs> this one first. It's Dumbledore Kitty Cat. I got this from Museum Context. Um, these weren't too expensive. I actually bought another one. I did buy the McGonagall one and I gave it to Chanel for her birthday because McGonagall, you know, you know the drill. She's over on TikTok. She approved, just saying. Don't know who I bought this for, but I'm one of these people. I've got to that age where I just keep buying greetings cards that I like in the hope that eventually the occasion will occur that I'm just like, oh, that card was perfect. I have in my filing cabinet an entire thing of greetings cards where I just hoard them. Sorry, not sorry. I'm organised. I've always got a card for every occasion. Next up, um, I got a couple of these. Um, I actually got a... Let's show them all. I got some Mina Lima cards uh, from Museum Context. These were 2 95 each. Oh, that one was 3 95 I'm not sure why that was a pound more expensive but here we go either way i bought these uh, as i said in my shop tour video of museum context i do tend to buy these kind of cards for when i do giveaways and it means that i can write a nice little card and a handwritten personalized note to whoever wins or i don't have a p.o box so i don't write to people anymore um, which is sad, I do kind of miss it. But giveaways, I get to write cards and get my wax seal stamp set out. Oh, I'm very excited for that. Not going to show this one on camera in case um, I use it for a friend. I'm going to do it. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit, guys. If you are... Um, there's two of my friends at the moment. One has just got married and one is getting married. I had I didn't buy it with anyone in particular in mind, but in case I send it to one of those, shut your eyes, stop watching, because, oh, guys, look how beautiful it is. Oh, it's so pretty. Anyway, that's all you're getting. i never seen a card like it, and I was like, that is stunning. <laughs> and it's coming home with me. What is left? What is left? I think it might just be the expensive things from Museum Context. So in the shop tour, go watch it if you've not seen it yet. As well as official Harry Potter things and unofficial Potter things and magical things in general, they do things that they like to call curiosities, which are vintage looking. They are not vintage. They're definitely mass produced. Uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush. They aren't vintage, but they look it. The first time I ever visited visited this shop and I think it was 2017. I bought, in fact, I can tell, I can show you what I bought. This was from my first trip from the museum context. It's this vintage looking clock on a stand and beautiful. So I was really excited to visit this time around, see what other goodies like this, other curiosities that they had. And I bought them. They weren't the cheapest, but I bought them because I just want my whole house to feel like Dumbledore's office, okay? Ooh, look at that. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. Just look at it. So it's got like a velvet bottom. It's got a wooden base and then it has this little stand. And then what goes inside there is a magnifying glass. Now this costs, I think, £95. <laughs> look at it. Hang on. Can I make my eye? <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> So it fits in like this, and then you can, there you go, you can balance it. But how cool is that? It looks so vintage. So, it, oh, it's fabulous, but <laughs> I see you. <laughs> we are on to the last item, which is another treat yourself purchase. You guys know me by now. Come on, there's no judgment here. There is a particular name for this, and I cannot remember it for the life of me. One moment. I got it. So this thing in here, got a very unusual name. It's a sextant. In case you don't know what one is before I show it to you, it says it's a charming pocket sextant as used by Victorian explorers and surveyors. It has all the pieces needed to shoot the sun. A sextant defined latitude, a clock longitude, defining the angle of the sun and stars with the horizon was an important way to navigate and survey. A beautiful, intricate little instrument with an interesting and ancient history. So yeah, again, this is made to look vintage but it is mass produced look i'm giving you a cheeky sneak peek are you ready oh it's in this box it's beautiful i'm gonna show it to you so it comes in this box there's the front of it very nice do, 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 do. um take it out 
This is the instrument. You, you can see why I like something like this. It definitely looks like something that would belong in Dumbledore's office. Pretty cool. I likes it. I like that it came in a little box. All that is left from this haul is this lovely bag that actually this bag, um, the tote bag, was gifted to me from Museum Context. They may have used it as my, my little basket whilst doing a bit of shopping, but they are really nice and you can get these from the store. But that's everything that I managed to pick up in Edinburgh. As per usual, thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video and got this far, then please do show me by giving a magical thumbs up. Let me know what your favourite thing from this haul was. And yeah, definitely give Edinburgh a little visit if you're able to sometime soon. I've been there twice now and it is somewhere that I would go again. You end up walking your legs off, but it's worth it. There's like a castle there. There's a lot of shops, good food. Uh, it's just a really nice city to, to visit so yes all right guys that is the end of my video and i will see you soon bye <laughs> need my magnifying glass but <laughs> bye <laughs>